Well, hello everybody. Here we are in lovely Austin, Texas at what we've dubbed the Smart Bear Studio. And uh, this is Michael Cote, of course, of Red Monk. And today I'm, I'm joined by a guest to go over a new release that Smart Bear has out. You want to introduce yourself? Thank you, Michael. Yes, my name is Greg Spora. I have a face made for radio, but yet we're going to record this on video. And, you know, actually, that was, that was the great thing about doing the podcast. Right. Uh, we did that right. podcast, and it's just, you know, my voice. And on so code to, reviewing. But then you actually, you took this giant picture of me and put that on the blog <laughs> entry, and I think, dude, more of a gravatar, okay? We don't need, you know. But, all right, here we are. Uh, yes, we're talking about Code Collaborator version 6.0. That's right. And, and so, you know, for, just, just to give us, like, a really quick introduction, you know, just, like, what, what does Code Collaborator do for people who don't, don't know off the top of their head? Code Collaborator's sole goal in life is to automate the grunt work parts of the peer code review process. So, you know, the collecting of the files and making them available on a central location, um, coordinating the communication between the review participants and tracking what everybody says and, and where defects found and that kind of thing, and then reporting the statistics at the end. What, what, uh, what release number is this? this we're, we're, we're talking about uh, version 6.0. And so in 6.0, so tell, tell us what the new features are. What, what, what's going to get people excited about this release? There are several things. Let's back up for just a second to version 5.0 last year when we added support for reviewing materials other than just plain text source files. And the reason for that was because you know, a lot of our customers, you're dealing with a software development team, but there are other people on the periphery as well that might want to be involved in the review. If you're building embedded software, it might be that you know, the firmware guys or the hardware design guy, he wants to be involved and he wants to see his schematic. In the yeah, video, right. Right? And then we also had just regular software development teams coming to us saying, well, this is great, but I'd like to add the design document to the review and look at it and reference it from within the same tool. So last year we added support for PDF files, for example, and for image files for JPEGs and PNGs and GIFs and that kind of thing. And that, that allows you to add in all the commentary and the usual exactly. meta information exactly. that you would on, on a piece of code. And, and so whenever I'd show the PDF feature to people, they would say, well, that's great, but I'd really like to do this with a Word document. Sure. And so, you know, there's, there's a plugin Microsoft makes available to create a PDF off a Word document, but people don't want to do that. They just want to take their document and put it in place. So that's one of the key features in 6.0. And the way we actually implemented that is kind of interesting. We, we built a Windows printer driver. So, <laughs> right. you know, because again, at the end of the day, we just need to be able to render something and paginate it and put it into the tool. Yeah. And, and the best way to do that really in that environment is a printer driver. Yeah. So it's not just... Word. It's not just Microsoft Office apps. It's any Windows app that can render paginated output. Um, other major features, a significant enhancement to our Eclipse plugin, which we've had for a few years now. In the past, it was limited to just being able to show you, you know, or, or actually to just being able to create a review or add materials to a review. And now we've actually brought the entire review experience directly into the IDE. Another thing that we've gotten a lot of, of requests for is support for Visual Studio. Um, you know, not everybody uses Eclipse, believe it or not. And so what we've done is just sort of an initial entree into the Visual Studio world. We've essentially got functionality equivalent to what we had in our old Eclipse plugin. So again, I don't have that ability to bring the review experience in like I've done now in, in you know, what, what the guys have built for our Eclipse plugin, but it's a start. Right, it gets you part way there. Again, it'll let you stay within your working context to at least be able to create the review or add materials to them. Right. And and then there are what I call red meat features. Uh huh. Not red monk, red meat. Okay. <laughs> this is the real <clears throat> type stuff because these are features that you don't have to be an Eclipse user or a Visual Studio user or you know, this is something that's going to affect everybody. This is, for example, one of the things that a lot of people have asked for for a long time, the ability to delete a comment after you put it in to the tool. Okay. We're not actually going to allow you to delete. We're going to allow you to redact the comment. Right. right. I'll show that to you during the demo. And the reason for that is we can't really completely remove it because it would break the IM type paradigm for our real-time chat capability. I mean, uh -huh. think about it. If you were IMing with somebody. And it just disappeared. And right? it just disappeared while you're reading it, that would kind of freak you out. Sure. Right? That breaks that paradigm. And it's kind of like that email recall feature, which is a little right, strange. Which is a little strange in its own right. right. And, and the other issue, of course, is we have a lot of customers who auditability, traceability, that yeah. kind of thing is really important. 
nothing can ever be deleted. Sure. Right? So we're going to allow you to redact a comment. We've changed the way that we display defects within the file comparison window. Um, we've added, again, some of these usability type features that affect everybody. We've made some enhancements to our ClearCase integration. We've also put in some pretty important enhancements to our integration at the other end of the spectrum to get and Mercurial. And how, how many version control systems do you guys work with now? 16. 16. And huh, that's, that's pretty nice. That's a, a rather large number. That's probably more than most people could name off. And so a fun <laughs> drinking game is to get a couple of beers in me and then try to get me to list the 16 in reverse alphabetical order. Oh, well, that's because I can do it in alphabetical <laughs> order, but reverse alphabetical order is a little more difficult. One last one maybe to mention really quickly. We did, and this is again something that you can't appreciate unless you're an existing user of the product, we've significantly enhanced some of our reporting capabilities. You know, that's kind of that third pillar of what it is we yeah. really do. For the customizable reports where the user can build their own query, we've added some additional fields that they can now filter on and select and that kind of thing. And then we put a lot of effort into adding what we call user-oriented reports. Ah. So we've always had review-oriented reports and defect-oriented reports that, again, primary key is information about the review overall, or primary key is tell me about the defects that were found. But now we've added a third category, which is tell me what I've been doing. I, I always think of that as, as uh, self-micromanagement. Well, that, and that so can, one of the you features sort of optimize your own self. is the ability for me to come in after the fact into the tool and find out well, what reviews did I work on on the, during the last week, right? And I had a guy at a customer site, you know, explain to me this feature because when he's doing his weekly status report, you know, yeah. he knows he typically spends about eh, 10 to 20% of his time during a week doing code review. Well, he wants to know what reviews were those. Yeah. Right? So again, user-oriented reporting. Well, great. Well, let's, let's check out a demo of those features. Let's do so it. Be good to see. All right.